what is good we're back and we're gonna go full tripod today we got a good guest lined up for you we're really excited to to have this pod and share it with you jay wayne how you doing today splendid how about yourself i'm doing doing pretty strong got the yellow legal it's mm-hmm. all over the place it's 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 abundant over here so if, if the yellow legal's out you know we're about to have a good time getting to the nitty gritty that's right uh, so got a fun show with you. Got a member of the Dynasty Nerds, uh, Garrett Price. Going to have a, a nice lengthy discussion about all sorts of different rookie values and and uh, long overdue. Values. Long overdue. We, we need to get Garrett on and, and and a bunch of other guests too. We're trying to yeah. It's got hard a nice to little guest list brewing here for hard you. Hard to though. grind and get those guests, but we're going to do it. This is the off season of guests here at the FF Dynasty. So uh, make sure you subscribe, comment, like. You know, hit me with all those five things. star review if you're listening on the podcast. Those, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Spotify and iTunes, gratefully baby. or uh, you know, greatly helps us out. So we really appreciate all that comments, whether you like or didn't like, yeah. love the show, hate the show, whatever. Holler at us. Shall we start the show? Let's go. So we are excited to welcome in Garrett Price. How you doing, man? Nice to meet man, you. Man, I am doing. I'm doing good. I'm. Uh, I, I was talking with you guys a little bit before the show, but I, like years ago, I had actually caught like a couple of your shows before I was really even in the space much at all. I just started writing, and so it's it's kind of a cool full circle because outside of Dynasty Nerds, that was the only other Dynasty podcast I'd ever listened to. Yeah. Uh, so it was. It's it's kind of a cool like full circle thing for me here. Nice. Well, we're glad to to have graced your ear ear holes and uh, excited to talk to you today, bringing us back to uh, we used to when we had Big Co here all the time, we would be uh, full tripod. So you're making us back to the full tripod today. So we very much appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. Long overdue, man. Excited to get into some rookie tiers and whatnot. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Today, we're going to mostly focus on rookies, kind of eventually start pitting them up against some veterans. Um, but we wanted to have another guy in the dynasty space and as well as we have some other guys coming up to just we're already, you know, we're all, all in our own little worlds about who we like and what we like about them and, and where we have them. And, and, you know, you might go on Twitter and battle with somebody, but it's way different to just ha- have a talk with somebody, you know, in real life. So, and by different, you, know. you mean better, yeah. <laughs> way better to talk with someone for yeah. sure. So we don't do too much Twittering. So Mm-mm. this is our Twitter. Um, yeah. And you can reach uh, yeah. dynasty price, reach uh, Garrett over at dynasty price and uh, obviously at dynasty nerds. Yeah. You can catch him on, on the big show on dynasty nerds. And then he has several of his own. Uh, do you have two different shows on YouTube? Yeah. Plug yourself there, Garrett. Yeah, I, so it's it's all under like the nerds umbrella. Sure, I've I've been doing a lot of just kind of seeing what sticks. Really, like we we did a good job last uh, rookie off season of trying to get out some content, and then if I'm being like completely honest, we kind of sucked at it from like <laughs> July through like December. Like we we did like barely anything. Yeah, pretty bad, honestly. Uh, so we're, we're trying to do a better job of being more consistent. So uh, I just recently started a series titled How They Win. Uh, and basically, it's just looking at the key strengths of these prospects, looking to get basically any guy that you would draft in the top like three or four rounds of your rookie draft covered by uh, the NFL draft. Uh, so I've already got two of those out. Uh, Kyron, Kyron Williams from Notre Dame, Abram Smith. I'm, I actually just finished up. Uh, Brees Hall, so we'll get all that edited. That should be out sometime later this week, uh, and yeah, we'll we'll get that going. And then I do I, I'm doing some interviews and some other like standalone stuff on YouTube too. But yeah, that is something that we are pushing hard because uh, we we have a lot of ground to make up for how bad we. Got <laughs> well, that's a that's a admirable uh, goal there to 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 get all those out before the draft. And I saw your super flex mock with Jay Wack. Tell that guy I'm looking for him. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm down, man. Piece, uh, of, piece of, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's let's start off with just you know, what what's kind of your philosophy, your strategy in, in a rookie draft? Are you a wide receiver guy? You're a running back guy? What do you like? Your best player available? You know, you drafting team needs only, or do you not care about team needs? All, all that kind of rigmarole. Yeah. So for me, uh, a lot of my draft strategy, whether it would be startup or or uh, rookie draft, it's it's going to be going best player available. 
Uh, and then when I when I trade is where I kind of try to more fill needs when I when I have those arise. So, yeah, in my rookie drafts, I'm really going best player available. And, you know, that can that can vary a little bit, too, depending on the the format, uh, some of the, the points, different things like that. To sure. Say like this person, universal of scoring and situ- like all of those things is, is automatically the one one usually isn't the case. A, a lot of those things fluctuate and change depending on you know tight end premium super flex Mm -hmm. uh, half point per reception you know all those different things so but for me it really does come down to i gotta take the best player available because worst case scenario i can always trade him later for a position of need but now i have a better player to trade for than you know whoever i settled on because i had to get a tight end or i had to get a quarterback or whatever it was right you're not trying to get pigeonholed into 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 just taking what your what your team needs rather than the best value and 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 having that value uh be long withstanding um throughout the course of the season Um, right so i think that's a good segue are the best players available usually running backs (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, is 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 Brees Hall in Superflex? You can even say tight end premium, uh, the the one one right now, because it seems like we're at this you is, know this. we're at a little bit of a nobody's Willis is probably the most uh, upside, but but raw and and you know right. could definitely have bust potential but and Brees seems like maybe he won't be you know maybe he's not touching the, the Jonathan Taylor realm of things which you know few are so i think we people need to just get over that that, you know there's only one or two guys like that um but you know it seems like it may be a little safer or or do you have to take the quarterback are you are you just what what do you how are you feeling about that and we do share a league and we have the one one so tell us what we should do yeah (laughs) so so, (laughs) you know just let us know uh i am typically a staunch like quarterback heavy early guy in super flex like typically and and the reason for that is is because of the the scoring settings and and specifically the the roster alignment to have enough starting quarterbacks in a 12 team league there, there that means there needs to be 24 starting caliber quarterbacks <laughs> viable options which <laughs> which really isn't the case right now in the nfl and on top of that you don't even feel sort of comfortable until you have three because you need a solid backup you got as to. well. And, and if you have if a solid me, four, if you have that solid third guy, that's a ridiculous trade potential to get sure. basically almost anybody that you want if you have a good quarterback to trade because it's so hard to find. It's so hard to trade for a quarterback at Superflex. You got to go find someone that has an abundance and then is willing to part with them. And it's it's just, and then and then there has to be a guy that you might like and want. It's just so hard. To trade for a quarterback it's, at Superflex, so so you're taking the quarterback over over Brees here. Uh, well, there was there was about to be a but. Okay, there was about to be Sorry. a but. I interrupt as I'm talking about this. My bad. <laughs> uh, no, no, you're good. So normally that that is the case. You know, every year I'm usually my top two, three players are all quarterbacks. But the other the other thing that I think is really really significant specifically in the first half of the first round you can't miss like you cannot miss on those because it sets your team back so far because chances are if you're picking there there's a reason now sometimes you traded for that pick and like congratulations you have a great team right and you still have a great pick but more times than not you you earned that pick you know your, your team didn't play that well you had a lot of injuries whatever it was your your team didn't finish well so you need that pick to hit so in this situation, I don't feel like any of the quarterbacks, I feel 85% or better that they will hit. You know, I think a lot of them are closer to these 50 50 marks. And maybe I'll feel a hair better once we get draft capital, landing spot, that kind of stuff. That might help it a little bit. But I'm still a big, you know, draft based on talent more than situation guy. Mm hmm. So I really think there's only two prospects for me right now that I feel 85%, 90% or better on that they will hit. And one of those two guys is Brees Hall. So right now, if gun to my head without knowing anything else, if I had to pick, it would be Brees Hall at 1-1. And the truth <laughs> shall set you free. 
I well, think, how about that? A running back going one one in super flex. I love it. I, I mean, I want to take Brees Hall. We have the one one. We could use a quarterback. We probably should take Malik Willis. But I mean, I'm down to take Brees Hall. I mean, I just it's like you said. You know, it's it's it's. I don't. I don't know that Brees is going to be, you know, an elite player, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he could be in the hall of pretty good weather. And, and yep. Will Willis be uh, even in the hall of pretty good. Now, with that being said, Willis will probably have a pretty long leash of extended value. Um, sure. So I, I don't know that you can necessarily go wrong. And maybe you could give yourself a, a half a season or a season to to move off of Willis if, if you really wanted to, because somebody will still be a big Willis guy. That was probably a Willis guy sure. before uh, he went there. But I, I tend to, to lean with you as, you know, again, we're, we're kind of in that situation in a league that we share with you. And, and I, I think right now we would, we would probably lean Brees. I mean, honestly, if you're, you know, I, I would prefer to trade out um, and, sure. and just absolutely not move too far back. You know, if I could get back to seven or eight, to get four or five. Or, yeah. yeah. So yeah, four or five. I don't, let's not go well, we have, far back. We already, we have five. <laughs> we do have five. So that's oh, nice, there you go. But, back to back picks. Get four and five. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. So what pick do you guys have in that lane? Huh? I don't know where Garrett's at. You, <laughs> you have, do pretty well, I think. We we, I, we took I over an orphan don't. team. I forget who we took the team over from. And then we like sold a bunch of pieces to try and win immediately. And then it didn't, didn't work, work out. And now we just blew it all up. We got a bunch of first round picks these next couple of years. And not a bunch, but enough. And. Just, sure. just traded for Elijah Moore, trying to get younger and just play that whole rebuild Ooh, game. I hate, I, I hate that game. It's no fun. It's no fun blowing up your team, <laughs> but uh, sometimes you got to do it. Well, it, it was a, it was a weird year for me because I was in your guys' spot. I think we entered the league around the same time. I took over. I think it was for the Podfather. Mm. Is who I took. That's over. why we joined the league. That's we joined the, the league, yeah, because he was in there. And then they, they staged a coup to kick him out. And we were like, no, nah, we don't vote. We don't want to kick him out. Can we just keep him in? I mean, like, what are y'all doing? Right. Because he won't play yeah, in too I mean, many leagues. stuck with me, man. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's the best thing that ever happened. Uh, don't give us Garrett. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Who, who even is that guy? What? Uh, no, no, no. So I, I, I vaguely remember. I think I, I even made a couple trades with you guys back yeah. then, and uh, you know, I was I was selling everything. I was selling oh yeah, all the we, assets, bought, but we bought we bought Le'Veon. Melvin Gordon and Le'Veon from you. Total winner idiots. in that trade. Yep. Bunch of idiots. <laughs> you got Josh yeah, Jacobs. I got, I got Josh Jacobs and there. a first I'm, or I'm something. Pretty happy. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, devastating. Out pretty well. Terrible. <laughs> but this year, I thought you know I wasn't planning on going all in, but Tyler Gunther just kept offering me trades and trades and trades. He's relentless. And, uh, I, he really is. And so at some point, like I was getting like great values on Christian McCaffrey and Derrick Henry. And I was like, <laughs> hey, well, I guess I'm going all in. Yeah, here we go. And then they both got hurt. <laughs> so here we are. That's fucking that's fantasy football in a nutshell for you, man. It's so difficult it to is. win. So. All right. right. Well, we solved one thing. We got Brees Hall at the one one. Super Flex. Pow. You heard it here. Love that. All right, so let's let's move on to the next kind of step of this and and see where we're at kind of tier wise. Uh, so we kind of just talked about Brees, so it seems like you're kind of in the same category as most people, as well as us. Is, is probably having Brees as the top the top guy and in, in non super flex. That's what we're gonna we're gonna tear up in non super flex uh, situation okay. here. Um, who who would be the next guy? Is there anybody in the Brees tier, or is it Brees by himself and then the next couple of guys? Or what do you think here? So my tiers are a little different for from uh, from a lot of the people that I've seen so far. Okay, great. Uh, my Brees is in a tier by himself. Okay, he's in his own tier. I can get down with then that. Then I have a second guy that's in a tier by himself. Okay. And then I have a tier of like eight guys, seven guys. Okay. So it's kind of weird how it's worked out for me uh, so far, but but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Okay. So who's the next guy? Is it? Let me let me guess. Here. I'm gonna go Spiller. I'm going Garrett Wilson. It's oh, gotta Garrett, be Garrett, it's Garrett Wilson because Wilson. because his oh, name's okay. Garrett. All right. So to be fair, I was talking just running backs. Oh oh oh, we're talking the whole the whole gambit here. The whole shebang. Oh, the that whole shebang. The yeah, oh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh oh okay. So for all right, so I would have two receivers in the same tier as Brees. Okay okay. So I would have Brees Hall. And I would have Garrett Wilson and Traylon Burks. Okay, I, I that like that. Tier. So that would be my top tier. The next tier would be Isaiah Spiller at running back. He would be the only running back in that tier. Okay. Uh, but then I would also have uh, Drake London and um, 
Jameson, Jameson Williams, mm-hmm. and I'm blanking. I'm blanking on. I have one more guy in that tier. Let me look. Uh, Pickens, Zamir White, uh, Dotson. I love Zamir White, uh, but it is it is not. I, it was another receiver, and now I'm uh, Olave. Look on my nerd scores. Uh, I'm a nerd I know it's not here. David Bell, is he? <laughs> it is. I'm no. I'm not <laughs> Uh, uh, actually, as I'm looking at it, I only had those two, so it was it was a four man tier for me. Or uh, fair, two well, receivers in the first tier, two receivers in the second. All right, so where where does where does Kenneth Walker and Pickens and and Doc Dotson uh, kind of come in here? Chris Olave, Dotson, yeah, all of those guys. So that becomes like a very interesting, like ginormous third tier, uh, because basically at the running back position, and those are the guys that I've done the the bulk of my study on so far I've, I've done wide receivers too don't get me wrong but i really dig into the running backs first and then i really dig into the wide receivers so at running back after that i have kyron williams kenneth walker tyler Beatty, zamir white and damian pierce and you could maybe put rashad white in that tier that all of those guys are very close uh in in my nerd score rankings all of them are less than a point apart uh, which is very close. Like Zamir White's three points ahead of all of those guys, if that gives you any indication. And there. stylistically, are they all fairly different players? Or yeah, you you kind of run the gamut uh, on on these guys. They're kind of all over the place. So Kenneth Walker is going to be, uh, for lack of a better term, like a poor man's Shady McCoy. Uh, he's a very elusive runner. He's not necessarily the biggest guy, but he's got a strong lower half. Mm-hmm. And he will make some guys miss. Not a not a crazy top gear. Uh, and, and his interesting thing is he hasn't been used hardly at all in the passing game. Right. I think that's more just a Michigan you know, State. It's not. It's not an it. ability. Lack of ability. It's just lack of usage exactly. in that field. Do you have exactly. Kyron? Hundred percent. Do you have Kyron over uh, Walker, or is Walker sliding there as the third? You got Ky- you moved yeah, Kyron so up. If I huh? had to rank him out. Kyron would actually be just a hair above. Ooh. And the reason for that is I don't know that size wise. We'll see how they weigh. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Kenneth Walker is only going to be five to 10 pounds more mm-hmm. than Kyron, Wynn, which is, I mean, it's still five to 10 pounds. Don't get me wrong. It's not like it's nothing. Um, but I don't think one's like this prototypical size back. And then the other guy's like itty bitty tiny. Right. Um, but the reason I love Kyron so much is if you're playing in a PPR league, he is the absolute, like, positively best possible option you could have as a third down back. Now, he can do more than that, sure. but we're talking about an absolutely excellent pass catcher, but he's also, he's got my second highest grade in pass protection yeah, in this class. And that's something that Kenneth Walker seemed to be pretty poor at was was pass pro. Correct. Like, Kyron probably does some of the little things a good bit better than maybe Walker does. Exactly. So that's kind of how that shook out for me. I think he's got. I think he's got solid vision as well. Uh, pretty patient, and and he can make guys miss. He's not quite the the elusive back that that Kenneth Walker is, but he's still pretty slippery in his own right as well. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very close. It's razor thin. But if gun to my head, I had to choose. I I am going to take Kyron over Kenneth Walker at this point. I think, you know, Kenneth Walker maybe comes in and maybe projects as maybe more of the first, second down guy. And Kyron kind of projects maybe coming in as maybe just the third down guy who could both, I think, could gain larger roles as as things move forward. Right. Absolutely. So then at at the running back position right after him, uh, right after those two guys, I have Tyler Beatty just a little bit behind. And Beatty's a really interesting prospect because he's fun to watch. He had. Gosh, he's so fun. Uh, Larry Roundtree was like the guy at Mizzou mm-hmm. forever. Yeah, he seemed like and he was there for 20 was, years. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I think he was an eighth year senior. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> he was just the the epitome of like a good college back that isn't going to be a good NFL back. Like he didn't do anything well, but he didn't do anything that poorly either. It was just like, oh, yeah, it's, it's Larry Roundtree. Yeah. Uh, but. For whatever reason, Beatty was kind of relegated to this like third down roll, like crap, it's third and 13. Uh, we're going to give you a draw and like you're electric, so maybe you'll get it. 
And so, like, he got, like, very minimal carries, used a little bit more in the passing game. But even there, it wasn't, like, this crazy usage. And so usually that translates to, okay, we're going to bring in a, a young freshman or somebody to take over that role, and Beatty's going to stay in his similar role because that's what he's done for three years. Well, all of a sudden, instead, they give him the role. They give him the lead back, and he just decides to have 1,600 yards in the SEC. Like, that's not an easy task, especially somebody at 5'8". I, I think he's built fairly well at 5'8". But Seems I would still sturdy. be surprised if he... I'd still be surprised if he comes in over 205 at best. That would be awesome. because that I, might even. Yeah, at 5'8", right. I think he was listed at 194 or something like that currently. So if he would put on that kind of weight, it, he definitely doesn't look that small on film. When I was watching, which I only watched some of it, like, you know, we've done a deep dive on maybe the top seven or eight guys this far. And so we, next up we'll do David Bell. We're going to we're gonna get Kyron and, and, Jen, and uh, uh, probably Pickens and whatnot. But – Diving into these guys more, like watching some Beatty tape. Uh, he doesn't look small. He looks he looks like a hoss out there, but he is. But I guess it's the the shortness, so the height, the height adjusted right. weight might right. might be all right. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, he looked he looked awesome. He looked electric. A lot of fun to watch, and then it does a ton of work in the receiving game. So you got to really really like that. You know, just the more we get into this class, the more I feel like I like these guys and. For the longest time, this class was trash, right? It's all about the twenty-three class. Uh, but I'm, sure. I'm trying to get in, man. Let me get, let me get some of these first, late first, second round picks and take some stabs. Like a lot of fun, dudes. So, uh, Tyler, Tyler Beatty. I want to call him Tyler Batty because <laughs> he's. I know. I I wanted to at first as well. <laughs> that all right. Sounds cooler. I'm uh, derailing well, again. And and that's the interesting thing. Like, that's why I said I have all of those guys in a similar tier. I don't think there's a lot of first and second round running backs in this class. Yeah. But I think there's going to be an absolute boatload of third and fourth round running backs. And so it's going to be really fun because we don't have a lot of guarantees, but we have a butt ton of lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, if, if you're lucky or if you do a really good job scouting, you could really end up with some solid, solid players here. But you could also light that pick on fire, and it could be worth absolutely nothing. So that's going to be the fun of this class. For sure. For sure. Just, and that's a, kind of the case every year. I mean, it's it, like it is. even I mean, the best prospects have like a 50% hit rate. You know, like the, all the first-round players, 50% shot on whether they're going to be good or not. Like NFL first-round draft picks. We typically do rookie drafts like in, in a lot of leagues a good bit later. Like August is like mm, really when we do our, our rookie drafts for Don't. the most part. I mean, we have certainly FFPC teams and we have the league with you drafts pretty soon after the draft. But it's sure. when you're drafting those kind of guys, go ahead and do your research and find your guys. But then, you know, also keep your ear to the ground throughout the whole off season to figure out what these guys are doing, how they're performing, how they're looking. And, and you know, don't just read one thing. Gather multiple sources because it's like if I'm a Niners fan and I paid a lot of attention to what was going on. And by the end of camp, it was like I had so much Elijah Mitchell because he was just sure. everybody was like he's outperforming every running back on the field right now and he looks so good so it's like even if you draft one guy like just don't get take locked on that guy keep your ear to the ground of some of these lottery tickets and you might be able to find you know something that you could deal a second third fourth combo platter or something you know while you get sure. closer to the season but I, you know absolutely no. to, to the I'm point not. of the class like you know i don't i don't think there's the high-end crazy uh elite athleticism but it seems like there's a lot of you know hall of pretty good depth Yep. Yep. I think I think that's a pretty accurate statement with this class. With all that being said, I think for us, or at least for me, I think I would probably put I'm a running back guy in non super flex drafts. Like I feel like mm -hmm. if you're going to it's, it's so hard to trade for a running back in a, a dynasty league. If he has any sparkle in his eye of being halfway decent like in any league that i'm in it's so hard to get that from get that guy from somebody so like the rookie draft is your cheapest spot to replenish that uh position and, and acquire more depth at the running back position now i'm not saying that i would only strictly draft running backs like you know I, i've i certainly would draft. i got no problem drafting burks wilson drake Jamison Williams, but I think I would probably take all three Brees, Spiller, and Walker, and I would take those three guys first. Um, for for my personal right. tiers, yeah. that that would be my 
first three, and then I would go Burks Wilson, and then I would go Drake Williams. And that's about where we stop as the depth of guys that we've really gone over briefly. Like Olave, I think, is is nipping at the heels there of, of maybe Williams and Drake for me. Um, I think yeah. where he could end up could be a, a huge tail. But, I mean, he just seems like he's pretty – should be I feel like he should be just a solid wide receiver two off the jump like I don't think he's a number one but I think as a number two like he could do everything you want to see from him and and the kind of guy that can make your play in one day as well as be you know super smooth at doing other things and then Kyron kind of falls in there I really like what I've seen from Jahan Doxson I know you don't like David Bell um but I I've he seems like he's got a pretty wide range of outcomes. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bust, but I also wouldn't be surprised if you're like, I don't really understand why this guy always wins, but he always wins. Um, yeah. Why, why yeah. are you guys like not as high on, on David Bell? I listened to the mock draft that you did with the uh, Jay Wack um, on YouTube. Really good. Listen, uh, you know, and you guys are both saying how you, you both kind of were down on David Bell. Um, do you, can you maybe tell us why? You know, it's, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a tough time evaluating him, and, and a lot of people like him, a lot of people don't like him. So I'm just curious to see what uh, what maybe your issues are. So after, you know, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, in the first round, especially like the top six picks, but the first round in general, I really want to make sure that I hit. It's not that I want to ignore ceiling, uh, but I really want to make sure that I hit. But if it's a guy that I'm evaluating that I don't think is a first round player, then I'm then I I switch real fast and I'm looking almost purely ceiling. And I think that's where what happens with David. It's a good Delphine strategy. Is, I think I, I think he has a decently safe floor as like a guy that could come in and be an NFL team's wide receiver two, which means for fantasy football purposes, we're looking at a wide receiver three or four most likely. And those are valuable assets to have. But in the second round, you know, that early second round, mid-second round, I would much rather swing for the fences. If I'm looking at receiver, a guy like Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. Sure. He is six foot four. He just tore up the combine. His numbers, if you're like a, a box score scout, you'll be like, I don't, I don't get it. He had like 400 yards and then 800 yards like it doesn't make sense but north dakota state ran the football a lot mm-hmm. uh, but he absolutely has the physical tools the physical ability he's got the ceiling traits a difference maker he's exactly got, yeah it's you said you said combine i think you meant se- did you mean senior bowl senior bowl yes yeah, sorry right. about that yeah. so we're recording the, wednesday the, night and uh, i'm not sure exactly when oh, i'll that get this confusing. i'm not sure exactly when i'll get this out but it'll probably be post combine i believe wide receivers go uh thursday tomorrow so we will see whether or not he tears up it. do he's you gonna, predict it. that too so you anticipate so. him tearing up the combine is, is what you're saying because i haven't watched any from, christian watson from from the people that i've heard and, and people that i trust uh it would be shocking at six foot four. He he came to the Senior Bowl and and was a, a legitimate six foot four. And I want to say he was like two twelve, two fifteen, something like like he's built very very well. Mm-hmm. It would be Wait, shocking for him to run below a four four five. Yeah. So you you have somebody with that size, that athleticism, and uh, you know as far as the route running separation, he was he was killing guys at the Senior Bowl with that as well. So if for somebody that's as smooth as he is and his size, if he can also have that crazy of speed, that's that's really appealing. That's enticing. That's somebody that you want to jump on in the second round. Um, and, you know, it's or the end of the first. It's it's you know, do you do you want to take the like last year was Rondell Moore, Elijah Mitchell, Terrace, Terrace Marshall and, you know, St. Brown, Elijah maybe Moore. maybe some Tony. And and Eli- sorry, Elijah Moore is who I meant. And you know who who are you going to take the swing on? And you know Elijah Moore was definitely the right answer there. Um, I probably I had Terrace Marshall probably above all those guys. Um, and I you know I got a little bit of each one, but um, you know who who was really the big ceiling guy? I thought it was Terrace Marshall, and and you know that that was a bust, and and or at least so far it's been a bust. One year, um, but did get a lot of Tony and and a lot of St. Brown. Um, right. So, you know, those were good consolation prizes in those where maybe the ceiling, maybe you weren't, I guess for me, Tony, I really like, I did like what could be with the ceiling, but St. Brown wasn't necessarily ceiling. It was like, I could just be drafting a fairly reliable, 
uh, volume volume kind of guy here, which you know you don't really know until you lay in the system. And Bateman was in that category of end of first, bottom of second, and and went in a spot. And you know from St. Brown to the Lions and 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 Bateman to the to the Ravens, I feel like those guys you know completely swap situations. Of if Bateman was on the Lions, he would be in the same position, if not better, than where St. Brown was. So. Absolutely. You know, totally it's a tough agree. it's a tough uh, it's a tough world out there when evaluating. There's so many things that can go in and and, you know, it's a it's a hard, uh, hard deal to hard nut to crack here. But I, I like what you said earlier, Gary, you said you, you try to go based on your talent evaluation versus the situation they get put into. And I think that's something that can't be stressed enough. You know, there's so many times where. I just hate that term landing. Well, landing spot dependent. Where is he going to land? You know, it's like how many times has that not been the case and not worked out? You know, A.J. Brown went to a sure. bad landing spot, worked out great for him. Nick Chubb went to a bad landing spot. Nick Carlos Hyde's there. He's not going to see the field. That worked out. Sony Michelle went to a great landing spot. Clyde Edwards Hilaire went to a great landing spot. You know, those didn't work out. Nikhil Harry, great landing spot. We, didn't, we were big on Nikhil Harry, but it's just how long do you have to listen to the great bad landing spot and it not work out that way for you to be like, all right, yeah. let's evaluate well, these guys' talent and see who we like the best regardless of the situation. So I just want to stress that one more time as we're in rookie season. It, 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 it can cool. go both ways, though, but it's really that you just never know how it's going to play out. Like, you don't know how, you know, you think that it's so log jammed over there and then within by week six, the dude's a starter and crushing targets. Uh, you know, if you stuck with Bateman from your evaluation and we're like, ah, fuck it, I'm just going talent over situation, you know, it kind of. Right, because going to Lamar was kind of a bummer. He's not the best. Just going to the Ravens the in general. And, was, and, right. They're not was, r- throwing the ball a ton. There's there's already Marquise there and, and yeah. Hollywood. So I, I, can, I, can, I can view it either way, but I think it's just best to just keep the open mind and, and really. Uh, not get you know, too caught up in landing spot. Just wanted, for sure. to, just wanted for sure. to throw that out there one more time. All right, so let's. No, I, that, that is ahead. where I tend to be. I, I, you know, I, I, I think you need to take the entire puzzle. Mm-hmm. But th- that is where I've landed more often than not. Is my pre-draft grades, uh, you know, rankings don't change drastically unless there's something crazy that happens in the draft. Like last year, I had I had a uh, Kylan Hill as my fifth ranked running back, I believe. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't get taken until the seventh round. Right. I liked him a lot better than the NFL clearly did. At that point, I you have to adjust to RB10. Right. You know what I mean? So like that kind of stuff, I'm going to move much. But outside of that, most of my other rankings, if they went with the similar draft capital that I expected, maybe moved a hair like a spot or two at most. But for the most part, I kept them in that same spot. Didn't yeah. Change tiers, just maybe changed rankings within the tier. I think I think that's a really really not well put statement there and and you know Kylan didn't quite work out like he thought he was going to but still you get could. the opportunity to draft the shit out of Kylan Hill still like I still like Kylan Hill now he nobody wants him sure. so I'm just going to pull as much Kylan Hill as I can had had the unfortunate ACL injury but like at times in the preseason looked pretty good and 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 had some had some good hype going um, and and sure. and a little bit of a bummer there, but I like that. That was a good, uh, well put statement. So let's let's kind of switch gears here a little bit and just talk about some of these higher ranking guys and putting them up against some some veterans who are already in the NFL. So you kind of had, you know, Brees, Traylon, and and Wilson kind of in a tier. Yep. All right. Would you would would Nick Chubb? Would you trade? any of those guys or would you trade Nick Chubb for any of those guys? That's a great one to start with. <laughs> um, because I think Nick Chubb is one of the more undervalued uh, assets right now. Uh, I don't think he's should be considered that far off from, you know, a lot of players he's getting drafted a round or two behind. Uh, but in most scenarios, unless I am a true tried and true legitimate contender and i just need the sure thing of nick chubb if i'm middle of the road or rebuilding i, I probably would rather have Brees hall over top of nick chubb uh just you give me that longevity mm-hmm. uh you know i'm gonna get an extra three four five years uh out of Brees hall as opposed to nick chubb he's 26 uh, yeah exactly so i i think i would probably go Brees hall unless i am a true contender then I would still take Nick Chubb. 
Okay. And then and Traylon and, and Garrett Wilson are probably maybe just as a, maybe not quite or Yeah. Um now they're wide receivers, so and that's that's where it gets tricky for me because that would that would come down to team construct and like am I willing to make that trade right based on like the need. Sure. But let's 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 throw that out the window. Let's say it's a startup because that's that's a little easier to to go with. That's a good if call. It's a true good call. Startup. So I don't if I don't know like if I'm a contender yet. I don't know where I'm at yet. You know, it kind of everybody's a like winner. Like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> exactly. You you leave with your team like oh this is sexy. <laughs> yeah. Things winning it and you go like For sure four and thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's a startup draft. I would probably go. I would probably go. Brees, Chubb, Wilson, Burks. I think. I think. I think that's right. I would feel pretty comfortable that way. I. I, I have a hard time getting off of Chubb, but I think it's the right move. Uh, let's. Let's. Sh- how about Saquon? Let me get Brees. I, really? I, oh. I I got I got to ride the I Saquon train Saquon. one more time. I I think I'm staying on the bus for at least one more lap around. Yeah. He might they might yeah. get traded. That would be fantastic for him. Oh, absolutely. That would be great. Although Dayball's coming in there, who knows what could happen with Dayball? Fair. For sure. Um so, you know, for for us, I would I would have Walker and Spiller kind of in the same category of, of guys that we're talking about for our side of things. Um, and I, I would, I'd feel pretty good about, I'm, st- I'm sticking with Barkley there. I, I might, I might be okay with taking all those guys over Chubb. I know Walker right now in DLF ADP that just came out, he's at 85. So he's way down there. So you don't have to make that move. So um, Barkley's but- a year younger than Chubb and has been injured he hasn't played a full season since 2018, I believe. 15 games over the last two years, perhaps. I'm, should be right around. In the, that should be 99% accurate, at least. Uh, <laughs> why, why so much confidence in the oft-injured uh, Barkley versus the never-injured except the big one in college, Chubb, with a year age difference? Because, I, I mean, I, I just – because Chubb's split in time with Kareem Hunt and – doesn't catch as many footballs, I guess. If, and we've seen Barkley in his rookie year, I think, catch 90 football. Like, if we just get Barkley back to being the top Barkley, the, the top guy, now you can say Chubb's offensive line situation is just far superior to anything. And, and Chubb is – you've seen him do it in, in great uh, in great chunks and great spurts. I mean, he's missed a little bit of time here and there. Um, also, I mean, he had a devastating knee injury in college, so maybe at some point that starts to kind of rear his ugly head as – as you know as time rolls on but i mean you know you get scared off from from todd Gurley uh of yesteryear and and chubb kind of had a a pretty bad injury just like that uh, but no i mean i just barkley's just been such an elite talent for for so long that we've been waiting for and, and we saw a little bit of it and we've seen glimpses here and there i just think that if you can get him out in the field and and get him involved in usage and he needs to be able to catch the ball and if he does that i mean i i think saquon would would still be up in the in the first round. That's really what it comes down to to me is that I think he would still be up in that first round. Whereas you know Chubb's been pretty healthy and doing his thing and is is down here at ADP thirty currently. Which like to your point, he should probably be up a little higher. Uh, but that's just right. more praise I think on on maybe this rookie running back class that or, or rookie class in general that that nobody likes or at least seemingly if you look on Twitter they're not very good. Um, so I think that's yeah. speaking to the to the top end of it. Um, how about uh, David Montgomery, an oft an often hated on guy? Where is, would you take all of those guys instead of Montgomery? Or uh, I think and, in a startup, I'd feel pretty confident taking all of them uh, above above David Montgomery. And and part of it too for me, I often tend to not go super running back heavy in startups. I tend to go a little bit heavier on the wide receiver side. Uh, so especially a guy that I don't think is spectacular. And, you know, now he's going into year four, which is kind of like the the peak. The year four or five is really like the peak of, of a running back's career. You know, I don't know what direction my team will be after the first year. Hopefully it's a contender, but I don't know. And I don't want to be I don't want to be stuck with him, especially it, it, I always worry about players that aren't elite talents. Anytime a new coaching staff comes in. 
because there's always that, you know, I want my guys in here. I want my players in here. Uh, obviously, elite talents are going to stay, but guys that are – they're fine. He, he could end up being replaceable. So Ooh, I think he gets extended. All of that. <laughs> I think he's going to get a, I think he's going to get a nice contract extension. We'll and if see. they could if just figure year, it out with with Justin Fields, and I mean he didn't have a terrible year last year. Averaged 15 points a game was, you know, RB sure. 15, but but dealt with some injuries, dealt with some preseason injuries, missed some time in the middle, uh, and then that was just a terrible line. team, terrible play calling, bad offensive line, and and you saw what he, he won in a championship the year before that. He's still. He's still only 25. Uh, he will be an unrestricted free agent in 23. But I think they got to, I think they got to give him some money and put him there. I mean, he's just done nothing but perform well and catch balls and score touchdowns and handle the rock. I, we're we're big Montgomery guys over here. Um, yeah, <laughs> sure. But I mean, right now in the latest ADP from DLF, Brees is at 43, Monty's at 37, Burks is at 46. So kind of all right in that same kind of group but I you know I could I could feel you on hey you're starting over here you need some depending on what my team build was like when I got to this in a startup like the 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 younger guys who maybe could top out at a higher apex of of what could be um with the Brees and, and, the, the, and the Traylon and the Spiller and the Walker for me um those dudes values are probably only going up in the right. near future Whereas Monty is never going up Monty no one gets res- no continuously one I think I think continuously does well for your fantasy team if you have him on your team and, and sure. still gets a little bit of disrespect as far as you know in community wise which you know it, that's really as, as silly as it is that that definitely drives or lowers costs you know how some of the bigger yeah right or, right or wrong absolutely right. I, I feel the same way about Jacobs I'm a big Jacobs guy you know he's had back-to-back years where he's been an RB one, but you wouldn't know it based on you know the Twitter narrative. So right. uh, I I feel your guys' pain on that. I'm I think that whole class people just don't really like that class. All right, so so then Jacobs as the next guy here against those guys. He's let's see, he's I still pretty it, I young. Think I, would, I think he just turned twenty four. Yep. Yeah, he was he was very young coming out, uh, which definitely helped. New regime, sure. new scheme. They picked up his fifth year option, so he'll be an unrestricted free agent in twenty three. McDaniel's, I, is, I, you know what? Had the usage is kind of maybe up in the. Uh, yeah. if they just I throw him the ball it a little is. bit, which they did last season. Yeah, they finally did start throwing him the football, and that was really really encouraging to me. But so far, McDaniel's has always had his pass catching back. He's always had, you know. Brandon Bolden, James White, you know, whoever it is. No, it's exhausting. And pass catching roles. <laughs> and it terrifies me that that could happen again with Drake or they could draft somebody or, you know, whatever. So that does scare me. But I do like I was encouraged by the increased usage. But more, like I said, more in my personal philosophy when I'm starting up, I tend to go weaker at running back than I do any other position. I'm usually heavier at wide receiver, especially with the super flex, you know, wide receiver, uh, quarterback, tight end. So chances are I'm probably still taking my tier one over Jacobs, but I think Jacobs would be before my tier two. So I'd probably take him before Spiller, Walker, uh, Drake London, those guys. Okay. How about one, one more against those guys, and we'll do a last year guy who didn't see the field, Travis Etienne. Don't know how you felt about him I coming into a... last year, but, you know, how yeah, I didn't have a crazy high grade on him. Okay. Uh, I I really liked him as a Devi prospect. So I've ha- I've had this weird roller coaster relationship with Travis Etienne. Loved him as a Devi prospect. Loved his acceleration specifically. The guy gets from zero to 100 miles an hour quicker than almost anyone that I've seen, uh, and it's a thing of beauty. But the more I dug into the All 22 tape, I had some some real vision concerns, and then once again he was drafted to a coach that's no longer there Mm -hmm. uh and he's going to be recovering from an injury it's it's a yeah thanks yeah absolutely thank goodness um because he crushed my my boy james white or uh, james robinson yeah that was uh, that was your people over there that ruined him (laughs) yeah the ohio state (laughs) guy freaking urban (laughs) jeez uh bring back trestle uh but no (laughs) I, uh, Sweater vest till I die. Yeah, I, <laughs> exactly. My I arms get cold. Like I, I can't do the sweater vest. My arms also get cold. You know, I'm not one of those guys whose arms don't get cold. 
<laughs> Sorry. I get it. I get it, man. Travis Sheets um, here, not loving him. I'm, hey, I don't like hearing that. I, 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 went, I went to Clemson, right, so, so. I think he would be. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I loved him at first, but yeah, I, I'm a little lower on him now. Uh, I would say he is. He's going to be right behind Jacobs in this equation that we've talked about. Okay. So it would be Jacobs, ETN, and then Spiller, Walker, Drake, London. So you still would take ET, though, over over these rookie running but, backs. But not, not Traylon, Brees, and... But not and... Brees Hall, uh, Wilson, or Burks. Gotcha. So he would be like the 1-4. Like, I would trade the 1-4 for him. Uh, that's that's a good good way to, to, to wrap that little top tier up there uh my, my theory on et all last off season was that i just i feel like he was too good for too long and people just started finding reasons to be like nah he's not any good it like if he would have if he would have just came out like when he he was peak hype i feel like nobody would have said anything bad about him not to say that but your evaluation wasn't accurate or anything like that I, that was just oh, my totally inaccurate <laughs> i mean come on travis et is the best ever <laughs> pretty idiotic that was go go tigers <laughs> He was just a he guy. He has no lateral agility. We we watched. We we obviously. I live right down the street from from Jason here, who went to Clemson. We've gone. I've gone to Clemson games with him, and it was just one of those players where I just was not understanding why every play you didn't give it to number nine because he was just in, impossible to wrangle yeah, and awesome. always was just you were holding your breath every time he had the ball. So it was just like those kind of guys. I'll take you, and I'll just see what happens. Um, so. All right, let's move on to the next realm of guys. So you got Drake and Jamison Williams probably kind of by themselves then on the next go round, or Spiller in there? I forget. I think you got Spiller, yeah, Spiller Drake, Walker, and Jamison. Uh, the, Spiller, Walker, and well, I have Kyron Williams over Walker, so he would be in that tier as well. Spiller, and then Spiller, those Kyron, two receivers. Okay, so and would, Walker, and then the the two receivers, London and, and Williams. So would you? Where would Michael Pittman come in in that conversation? Ooh, you guys are asking some good ones because I do, I do really like Michael Pittman. That's really what this game comes yeah. down to. Do you like the guy? Do, you know, I didn't know who right. was your guy. Yeah. So, but we just, you know, we're you looking at ADP and we're we're plucking players off of ADP that we kind of like and trying to pit them up against these rookies. You know, we're just trying to figure out. And this can help you. You know, the listeners. This can be from a from a startup standpoint. You know, when do I take this rookie? Because I get that question a lot from new dynasty owners. Is like, man, I just don't know when to take the rookie in the startup draft. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's it's hard. Like, because you want to go with what you know versus what you're projecting but then sure. you know if you study enough and you like a guy enough you can pretty much project him to be good and, and take him where you see fit and then at the same point like if you're in your rookie draft and you have one 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 five one seven whatever do you, do you take the pick who do you take or do you trade it and who do you trade it for you know that's what we're right. trying to trying to get down to here so uh right. michael Pittman. Yeah. Go ahead. Versus the, the, basically a late first round pick here right and michael Pittman well, probably a late mid first mid first round pick mid i would first. say Assuming, That's, yeah, assuming is we're not because we said one QB, right? Right, right, right. right. Mid, mid. Yeah, first. so probably about a mid, mid first here. Uh, but real quick to touch on your point, because I think you, you had a great point, because I've gotten this question a lot, too, where like I, I don't know where to take these rookies and startups. And one of the things that I found to be helpful for me is I do my own like mini mock draft. A hundred percent. And so I then I have my list of like guys where where they would go. And so like, oh, OK. So I roughly have Drake London at the 106, all right? So then it's much easier for me when the 106 is available on the board to say, okay, do I like Drake London more or do I like, you know, his former teammate, Michael Pittman Jr. more? You know, and that makes it a lot easier to be able to, to answer those questions. So highly recommend having some sort of ranking, a mock draft, a big board, what, however, whatever you want to call it, however you want to do it. Highly recommend that before any startup. Yeah, I think that's a we we, um, we do and, the and, same we do the same thing, and we're currently with our patrons and and whatnot building building out tiers for this season, and and now we're starting to try to integrate the rookies. So that's kind of where this whole thing came from. Is like this is what we were doing. So let me bring in let me bring in Garrett and, and get his opinions. So, so Michael Pittman or Drake London? Or, I'm going to take Pittman. Uh, they actually have a lot of similarities. Uh, one, obviously, they both played at USC, uh, but. They're both some of the most physically imposing receivers that you will see in a class. Uh, both guys play that big bodied go up and get the football type of, of play. Uh, so I think. But both move Michael well for Pittman bigger guys here, as, as well. Not speed wise, do. but agility wise. I don't think they're, they're stiff big athletes. guys. Yeah. 
Exactly. They both can do a little bit after the catch. Uh, oh, but but would but you right give the now, edge though to 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 Drake on that though? I feel like Drake no, is give, pretty dirty after the catch. Oh, he is. He, oh, after the catch, yeah. You see, and it's it's interesting too because you see some of that back basketball background too, and mm-hmm. some of his plays in the red zone and stuff like that. There, so there's definitely a lot to like with Drake. But if I've found a receiver that is young and has already hit to some extent, I mean, midpoint in the season. He was on People fire. People were loving yeah. Michael Pittman. Oh, my gosh. And you couldn't buy him if you wanted to. Tailed off at the end of the year, kind of the entire team. Yeah, the, I was uh, about to say, that was exactly what I was going to say. The Colts just kind of just, you know, totally you can blame Carson Wentz somewhat. I mean, he wasn't outstanding, but I feel like Wentz has really taken the bullet for, I feel like the Colts just all defensively and offensively just kind of took a little bit of a shit at the end of the season. Not that that's, sorry. That's 100% what happened. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, I think I'm going to take Michael Pittman. And if they dare get another playmaker, whether that be Paris Campbell is actually able to stay healthy for one. Golly. Uh, mm. Whether that's somebody they draft, a free agent. I don't, I don't think that hurts Michael Pittman. I actually think that helps Michael Pittman actually have someone else in that right. offense right. To, to take some of the focus away from him. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, Austin Dullin had a nice little uh, – or Ashton Dullin had a nice yeah. little end of the season there. So he, he was kind of a guy we scooped up in a lot of places at the end of the season, but they the do. Last pioneer, baby. Yeah, they need, they, need, they need somebody else to take some heat off of him. So how about, um, how about Devonta Smith? In this tier, Vonta Smith's another another guy that I had really high in the class. I, I one of the things I'm really proud of is overall last year. You know, going back to the nerd score, we crushed the wide receivers with one exception. I had Smith over Chase. I had Chase at two. I had Smith at one. Other than that, we I mean we crushed. We didn't have we didn't have Terrace Marshall high. We had Amon Ross St. Brown really high. Like all of it was beautiful, and then there was that blemish at the very top. And obviously today I would take chase infinitely higher than i would smith but i but i am still a big believer Mm -hmm. in in devonta smith and i i would actually have him close to the top tier of this class if we were to do it all over again so especially as a pure prospect it gets a little iffy knowing that he is in philadelphia hurts isn't the best passer uh in the world but at the end of the day, I do believe that he's a talented enough receiver. And even, I mean, he had 900 some yards as a rookie. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, bad season. Chase just happened to absolutely murder it. And, you know, Waddle came around and was doing work. And, you know, but, you know, he didn't have a terrible season by rookie standards by any means. No. And, and again, just situationally just didn't land in a situation that was quite as good as those other two guys. If he, if he could have got paired up with Burrow, I mean, I think Devonta Smith would be at near the top of fantasy drafts right now. I think he's that good. So I'm kind of with you there. I would absolutely take him over Jamison Williams and probably Drake here. So you're not, but what about, I would take I, I him over all these wide receivers, right? I think that's the boat I'm in right now too. I think, I, I think he's going one, two for me right behind Brees. I think I, I'm so in ina- uh, yeah, I could get down with that. I I like that Wilson's kind of got that all around game where he can kind of do everything and that intrigues me a good bit. And then just the overall just ridiculousness of what Traylon's ceiling could be also really, really intrigues me. Massive. Um, yeah, but I mean, the Smith ceiling is. Oh, oh for sure. For ridiculous sure. Ridiculous, too. So. Uh, so scored five touchdowns. I'd, 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 I'd probably have those guys pretty, pretty even. Let me get Devonta. Fuck the um, situation. Let me get Devonta. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, I, 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 yeah. I, I like it. I don't now, the running backs, I don't know. Well, Spiller, Walker. Uh, I'm taking those guys I, I over him. Wire, I might need the running back. But. I'm still taking those guys over him. Yeah. All right. Um, how, about, how, about, how about, let's go running back here. How about Aaron Jones? Dead. He Nobody. seems very dead. That's kind of why I dead. wanted to bring him up. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm taking everyone in tier two ahead of Aaron Jones. I would have a hard time giving up a first round pick right now for Aaron Jones. The guy no that's way. towards the end of his career for a running back. Uh, you know, it, it, a lot in flux. I, Aaron Bay. Jones, they did they did restructure his contract. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, not Jones. They did restructure Aaron right. Jones's contract. But I mean, damn, he's so old. Where is he at on this board? 
about to be 28. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Aaron so Jones. Me, but they did restructure. He's got 9.5 dead in 23 and 5.6 dead on the contract in 24. So it almost seems like how can you cut a guy and lose 9.5 dead? It yeah, seems like they got to keep him shit. for another two years. So – He'll, I mean, but if Aaron Rodgers isn't there, how, how enticing right. is the situation? And, right. and really a question for me in this offseason is, is right now, is A.J. Dillon way overpriced or is this a good deal for A.J. Dillon right now in like the mid 60s for ADP? Is he about to just. I, I think that's about right. I don't know that A.J. Dillon is like this elite talent, top 10 yeah. type of guy. If anything, I thought he was actually slightly overdrafted in the NFL draft. I was surprised when he went in the second mm. round. So uh, I think he's a fine player, but I think he's a guy that's going to be more or less like running back 13 for you. And yeah. you're, you're happy with that. For sure. But I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's going to be like, you know, the, the same level as uh, some, you know, a Brees Hall in this class or something like that. Or so even Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones goes, even Aaron Jones when he was, you know, really peaking for the for the Packers when he was just slaying it. he's probably not going to be quite maybe that ceiling level but I, I I've, I've got a good right. deal of of confidence in AJ Dillon and, and that I like that that running system that that that, that, the, that the Green Bay sure, Packers have absolutely. there um, so yeah sorry go ahead Aaron Jones yeah I it, at this point he would be in that next tier for me I'm taking everybody in tier one and tier two ahead of him uh, I, it, you know, if if I'm a if I'm a contender, if we're moving removing the startup strategy, if I'm a contender, like I could see trading, you know, one twelve or two one for him if I really really needed a running back. But in startup world, it would it would have to be a screaming value for me to take him because yeah. I really tend to just not touch a running back over the age of 24, 25 in a startup until I'm in round, Tenth seven, round? Eight, yeah. nine, yeah. you know. And, and so for Aaron Jones specifically, yeah, I think probably around ninth round, I guess, I would – I think that would be a good enough value where I would consider taking him. But even there, you're like, you know, there's some young receivers that I really like here. Sure, sure. You know, sure. Up, you know do, do I want you know? Uh, you know, I'm a big Cole Komet fan. Like, would I want Cole Komet there? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's where it would get tricky. Well, uh, I'll take him in the ninth, but is at his 50 ADP, which is round five. That's way. That's probably too. Aaron yeah, never too much. Yeah, I will never get him. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's let's kind of. I don't know how you feel about Michael Carter. He he seems like he's kind of pretty elevated right now. Do you like Michael Carter? Would you take all those yeah. guys over Michael Carter or? I think Michael Carter's a really interesting case. He would be he would be right around Kyron and, and, and Kenneth Walker for me. I think I'd still take Spiller ahead of him. Uh, but he would be right in that same spot as Kenneth Walker, Kyron Williams. Okay. Right, so if you got right on in there. You got on the board late first, right? That's where you'd probably take Kyron. Mm-hmm. Uh you you, yep. you could trade that pick and get Michael Carter. Trade one ten for Michael Carter. I think I'd be comfortable trading 110 for Michael Carter. Yeah, that's that's right about the right spot. I don't know that I could go much more than that, but that's right about the right spot. All right, let's do – how about Michael Thomas or Jerry Judy? And then we'll wrap this tier up, and then let's move to the those lower tiers that we don't know a whole lot about. I want to talk about some maybe veterans and some other guys. Sure. Go ahead. Michael Thomas and Jerry Judy. Okay. Uh, Michael Thomas, I feel like there's no right answer. With my like, I feel like this is like a trick question because uh, it, it, it's so it's so tough with him. I mean, he didn't play at all, he, but we've also seen him be an absolute alpha wide receiver one, like the overall wide receiver right. one by a wide margin. Sure, and they but it sounds like they there anymore. Right, so. sounds like they might bring James back though. That would probably help him. He did okay with, when would James help. was in there for a minute. Um, that that would at least yeah, be some sort of stability, what, but like you said, yeah, Sean's out of there. So, yeah. It, so at this point, I'm probably going to let someone else draft Michael Thomas once again, unless it's like a screaming value that I just can't can't pass up. Uh, but Jamison I'm Williams and Drake here. Tier two. Okay. Yeah, easily you, taking those guys ahead of him and Ju- sure. yeah, Judy just, as well, just because. Judy's tougher, but yes. Okay. Unless you told me right now that Aaron Rodgers is in Denver, sure. Then maybe it would be a little more. Interesting, Somebody but, better is uh, going to be in Denver. They're going to get another quarter. You would like so to think so, to but I thought better. that was going to be the case last year, and it wasn't. Yeah, I know, man. It's it's tough. 
It, You've been just waiting so for so long for this Denver around. offense to break. Like, oh, they got all these guys. Like, they, this offense has to be good. It just fucking doesn't happen. Yeah. All right. It's tough, man. So let's let's kind of move down to that 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 tier you have with um, Zamir White and um, Beatty and which man Zamir White? What an incredible story that man is! Like just yeah. the whole I, I read this article. I should I should pull it up. Uh, it was on ESPN just about his backstory and how you know fourteen year old mom who, who doctor told him to abort him at six months into the pregnancy because the only way to pound they gave him two weeks to live once he once he was actually born spent the first hundred days in the hospital of his life battled back from cleft palate cleft lip leaking kidneys in and out of surgeries in hospitals his whole entire uh youth and then just you know they said he would they said he would only grow to be like five to 125 they said that's the biggest you could grow to based on the problems he had at birth and he's six foot 215 Zeus just coming in there <laughs> yeah, murdering people Zeus. came out as a five-star recruit terrible ACL injury his senior year then boom tears it again at Georgia his freshman year and just anybody else would have been like I'm fucking done but like he's he was like I'm he's no stranger to like rehab so he attacked both those ATL ACL repairs had a very successful career Georgia like just beat all the odds just an incredible human being so it's like amazing guy you want to cheer for um but like also like really fucking good on the field and uh so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see. Well, let's put. I'm really curious to see where uh, where where to put Zamir so up in, against some in of that, these guys. But. In that Zamir tier, you got a and your running back thing. You got a pretty big group there. You got like a Pierce and, and Rashad White and and uh, Beatty. Kind of got all those guys in one Beatty. in one cluster. And, and honestly, like they are not that far from Kyron and, and Walker either. Like okay. they're right there. Like I could almost argue they are all in the same tier and then maybe isaiah is a slight tier above those guys but it's all like man they're they're all like decimal points away from each other and who who would you put it like i know it's a tier and i don't really like to put guys at top of tier but will zamir white be at the top of that tier for you he would be for most of this process he's been my rb5 uh which has been not popular if i'm being honest like a lot of people were not have not been fans of that uh, but I, I go back to what I see on the tape, and yes, I know that he is not going to be the most dynamic receiving back at the next level. Oh, but, but give him a chance. That is- man's going to work at it. Like I saw, he caught some balls and looks dynamic in space. Like I, yeah, I think he can figure it out. This man works harder than anyone that I know. Like this, this he'll figure it out. If anyone can figure I, it out, and I'm with you there. Like I, I'm absolutely with you there because I. I don't think he looked terrible in that. He just wasn't used in that way, and his his profile doesn't scream receiving back. But we're talking about a, an elite, elite athlete. He was the number one recruit at the running back position coming out of high school. Like he was the guy. We've seen Georgia put out solid running back and solid running back after solid running back under Kirby Smart. There's only been four running backs to eclipse two thousand yards in their career, and those running backs have been Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, and DeAndre Swift. And Zamir White. Boom. So I mean, that, that's a that's a he's that's good. A good that's it. Be in case closed. Those are straight facts. <laughs> Keeping it one hundred. Done and done. <laughs> so I'm I'm a big Zamir White fan. I think he's going to lead a committee somewhere. I don't know that he's going to be this true three down back. I would love for him to, but I think he will lead a committee, and I think he's going to do it really well. All right. So him or Miles Sanders? Whew. Miles Sanders is the most like <laughs> meh player ever. He's so frustrating oh, because so I frustrating. Think he's, I think he's actually somewhat talented. I yeah. don't think he's a bad football player. Yeah, not nah, but mad, I also mad athletic like, and talent. The also, talent's there, right? But I I have no idea how they're going to use him. Yeah. I don't know how many people they're going to use. I don't know what week it's going to be a freaking Boston Scott week, Kenneth Gainwell week, like. I just don't know. And the injuries. Without knowing. Yeah. Ugh. So without knowing draft capital, it's difficult. Sure. I ADP wise, I'll tell you that they, these guys are not close right now. DLF close. wise. Yeah. But right. I mean, I, I think that's going to as we proceed here, think that's going to continue to probably change whether it's Zamir White or or Cook. One of those two guys from Georgia will probably end up, I, I think, sure. whether it's the right guy or not. Um, you know, probably will end up rising through the ranks here, um, as well as maybe Rashad and, and Pierce here could could 
could jump up somewhat through this yeah, process. Absolutely. Um, but so yeah, I would take Sanders, but I don't want to. How about Penny? And I, and, and you know, I don't think I would have to choose between. No, you guys. don't. You know, that's kind of what I was saying is that you don't right now. Yeah. How about Rashad Penny? Yeah. Uh, I would actually I might take Penny over Sanders right now. OK, so uh, then so I then, know that that's like a gamble. Uh, well, they're not that but, far off. They're only like, two off in, in DLF ADP. So, I mean, that's that's totally legit. Okay. And Penny's about to get his shot and finally looks healthy. But but like Penny or, or or Zamir. Well, if he just took Sanders over Zamir, then, I mean, I guess any same right, Penny so, over there. Right, so if A equals B and B equals C, yeah. Um, ah, see, I can nerd out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you feel about Kadarius Tony. We're pretty big on him. Would you take Tony or would you take any of those guys? I I would still take Tony over Zamir. It is very close, uh, but I'm with you. I'm a fan of him, and especially mentioned it before, Brian Dable coming in. I think if if Tony can keep his head on straight, that's it. Right, that's 100%. it. hundred percent. We've it. said that a million times. Yep, that's it. It's between that's the ears for him, it. it's that's the only thing holding him back. Yep, yep. Because we've we've seen the ceiling. Yeah, he, he had two games where he looked. Unstoppable, oh, unreal against some People of the best don't move corners. Like that. Right, he was he was cutting up digs. You know, yeah. he was making digs look yep. silly. In I was game literally just Cowboys. watching that game again and laughing out loud, like just going, <laughs> like, what is this dude doing right now? This is ridiculous. Also, those throwback Giants uniforms are so sick. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Bring them back, baby. Um, so all that's, right, that's yeah, too so easy. I'll take Tony. How about Kareem Hunt? Kareem's uh, getting up there in the tooth. He's Kareem, 27. Kareem, I feel like, is the sure bet to to go ahead and lock you up a nice flex player here, week in, week out on a on a startup, and, and make you feel really good. But you know, you're you know, he's 26, 27, Seven. and you know, do you want are you, are you going for the proven thing that you know you can get points from, or are you going from somebody who you really like and and have a little bit of love affair for, but it's unproven and and could, you know, with the way you like him, maybe he's in the in the top 50 ADP of Zamir White at some point. So, you know, how do you feel about that? It, all right. This is, this is going to be cheating slightly, but, but I would take Kareem Hunt. However, it is only because I know the perceived value of Hunt is higher and I could probably get – Zamir White around later. So Fair. in a real draft, I'm probably taking him. Yeah. However, if the guy behind me said, if you don't take Zamir White here, I'm taking him, then I'm probably taking Zamir White. Yeah. Um, cause, so I do think I actually yeah. like him more, but I think draft strategy wise, I think I could get away with it. All right. I like that. that Pr- lawyered that lawyered cool? your way around that one. I like that. <laughs> nice. um, let's, right, cool. let's throw uh, a, a veteran in here and then I'm going to throw kind of two or three more guys at you and we'll get we'll get out of here. I know you've been here for a while. A Rob, you got to take a Rob over those guys. Right. Or, or you say no way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm take I'm taking a Rob over those guys. OK. Um, how about Josh Palmer came on strong at the end of last year. Could be tied to Herbert. Maybe catches a little volume over there. We don't know what's happening with Mike Dub. Would you? Would you? Could you possibly? There. Maybe those guys might be a little closer in actual ADP right now. How do you? You know, I don't sure. know. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think I would take him. And there's a lot of receivers that are in in this tier as well. You know, you have the Jahan Dotsons, you have Christian Watsons, you have like those guys. So I think he would not slide David Bell. in there. <laughs> Not David Bell. I would take Palmer. Uh, but I would take all those running backs, I think, ahead of him still. So Beatty, Pierce, um, those guys, I think they would all go slightly ahead of, of Palmer for me. And there would be about three or four receivers in this class that would probably still go ahead of him uh, in this tier as well. Nico Collins? Nico and I have an interesting relationship. I thought I, I, I thought somebody over there I in like your him. in your neck of the woods liked, liked Nico, so... Which Rich, we do too. Rich likes so. him hair more than I do, uh, but I actually in the league that you know, Rich and I are both in that league with you guys. Uh, I I have Nico, or at least I did. I don't know. I've made like eighteen trades with Tyler <laughs> Gunther, so it could have been one of those. <laughs> He's know. so persistent as he uh, finally finds something to get from him. Like at first, you're like, ah, I don't want to. I'm doing other things, man. But then he's I don't like, want to this guy. <laughs> he's just finally something. Well, I can't. I can't not do that. Let me. Okay. You, you, why are you trying to sell Elijah Moore? I'll, if you're trying to sell Elijah Moore, I'll, let me get Elijah Moore. Whatever. We'll figure it out. 
that's how I got Derrick Henry and <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. Literally, had right. neither of those players in any league I play in. But he was so persistent. At some point, I was like, "That deal's just too good. I got, yeah, I take it. I guess I don't know." <laughs> yeah, um, I don't even remember where I was at. Nico Collins. <laughs> oh, Nico. Yeah. Uh, so I will say Palmer slightly ahead of Nico. Okay. Uh, and so that would so that would put uh, him behind I, those it guys. Would be roughly in the same spot. Okay. Where, where does Ken, one more? I want to do one more. Where does the new Kenny G, Kenny Kenneth Gainwell, where where does he stack up against that tier in terms of the running backs? Are you taking Zamir, Beatty, Batty, those guys over Kenneth Gainwell, or because because you know in in startups Gainwell is like a nice little RB piece. Yes. Where, where is he at? One sixteen. So that's that's round thirteen. You know. I think that's probably ahead of all of these rookies that we're talking about currently, Pierce and White, both the Whites. Um, how, where does Kenneth Gainwell I, I stack like up? I like Kenneth Gainwell quite a bit. Okay. I would still take I would still take Beatty and Zamir ahead, possibly Pierce. I think I would take Gainwell ahead of Rashad White. Okay. Um, but, man, they're, I mean, that's the perfect tier for him to be in is with all of those guys. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for the zero RB guys. In, in, pre- in pending free agent, Christian Kirk will be the last one. Let's wrap up with that one. Would you take Christian Kirk yeah. or all all those guys? I'm rid of them. I'm not a big Kirk guy, so I'll okay, take, I'll take those. Guys. I mean, game log wise, it's pretty strong as far as like a, a, a nice little flex starter for you. A um, lot of lot of double digit points there, and, and a free agent. So, and Chase Edmonds is obviously a free agent too. I don't know how you feel about him. Uh, I felt better until I heard Cliff Kingsbury's comments on uh, their running back situation at the at the uh, combine. What was it today or yesterday? They were, they were asking about the running back situation. He's like, "Yeah, obviously we like James uh, quite a bit, and uh, would love to bring Eno back as well." And uh, you know, and then like that was it. That was like all he said basically. <laughs> and like Chase Edmonds is out of there then. Seemed to be part of the equation or they already have yeah. a deal in the works that they haven't signed yeah you know, I don't yeah know. maybe yeah he's just keeping everything on the dl they're like we're gonna figure out what's going on with kyler and we'll address everything else later uh, how, all right so I, i've been i've been into oddly enough kind of buying trying to buy both of those giants receivers and in tony and kenny galladay i just feel like kenny galladay's dead uh-huh. and there's there's some juice there I think there okay. there's potentially some juice there. There's would a you, lot of money that the Giants have take, to pay him over and, and the next few years. And I hate saying I'm buying these two Giants receivers, but you know you bring Dayball in, they don't really have anybody else, and I feel like those two guys are pretty fucking good. Um, and and Galladay with Stafford was was a, was a strong receiver when he was out there. Would you would Kenny Galladay? Would you take him over those guys? I think he I think he would factor into into this tier. Uh, but he would be toward the end of the tier. Uh, so we're talking, you know, I'm looking at probably two in a one QB, like two, eight range. Yeah. I've seen, I've, I would be willing to trade for. Him. Oh man. I, I think I, yeah, two, eight, I would give Kenny Galladay all day for two, eight. I think that's you get, you would give up. Yeah. Two I would eight give eight, two, eight to Galladay. get Kenny Galladay. I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. So. I think that would be the range where I would feel feel comfortable i don't know that i could do much more he doesn't that. like kenny g that's what he's basically no that's that's fine i, I feel like he's I, I like i mean it's still the second it's not like it's nothing yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll mid to late second though i you know i guess that i guess i guess you could probably you could probably get kenny galladay for a two for any two right now they'd be happy i hope send, so I'll get the three so. back you could get the three back and the four back i don't they, know if you're getting all that back they but. do not want and nobody wants anything to do with kenny galladay come on i'm buying I mean, obviously, you know, if I'm not if I'm a dog shit team, then I'm not buying Kenny Galladay. But like, <laughs> no, no, you're not. You're not doing a rebuild. Sure. But a contender. I think that's a good contender stash. Like I'm he's at one twenty five ADP right now. Yeah. You buy him as your wide receiver, like five. Right. And I don't need him, know, but he's a luxury he's a wide item. Receiver three. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate you sticking around with us. We had some technical difficulties to start off with, and you hung in there with us, and you hung in through all this a little little lengthy. So we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Make sure you go check out uh, at Dynasty Price on Twitter. Make sure you check out all of his stuff on YouTube under the Nerds umbrella. He's doing a lot of good stuff under there, and obviously, you know, the Nerds Big Show. He's over there, uh, you know, just being being you know the king of the castle over there. The Nerds Do it holding it down. <laughs> 
Absolutely, guys. Thanks so much for uh, for having me on. Uh, getting and you know this kind of stuff's even helpful for me because sometimes I don't think about certain players and I'm like, oh, who would I have rather have there? I I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, this was even a helpful exercise for me. Now yeah. we put you through the ringer. That was a lot. We put you on the spot, and you, know, you, you nailed it. Uh, obviously, we didn't agree with everything, but no one's going to agree with everything. That's what we're we got to get this sure. discussion out, chat it out, see how you feel, and then you know, you guys at home, you decide for yourself. That's what we're just trying to educate you and give you different perspectives. And you know, really appreciate you coming on, Garrett. It's been it's long overdue. Uh, we're gonna we need to get in this guest game better and and have more uh, nice, incredible guests such as yourself. So really appreciate you taking yeah. out the time of your busy schedule set the bar us. high for us there and in, in in our uh rookie guest uh breakdown breakdown here so appreciate you rundown maybe all hey, right no well problem. i'm uh you know i'm the guy that's like the uh the skinniest kid at fat camp you know it looks good <laughs> there but once you get someone else in you know it'll, it'll look a lot better i promise oh you're too you're too self-deprecating but that's a good quality you know you gotta you gotta self-deprecate that's just the way For that's sure. why i got i got two two fresh kids i got i just gotta teach them a little bit of self-deprecation you get after it you get to it before they can get to it then there's nothing for anyone else to say you know that's right so all right well we appreciate you guys Thanks joining us yeah, man. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you, all the listeners. Uh, we'll be back with more Dynasty content for your pleasure. Peace.